Welcome to Figma Bytes, the video series that aims to teach you to speed up your Figma workflow. We've got another big bite on the menu today. We'll be building a prototype using an advanced technique we've dubbed prototype tokens. When building prototypes, it can become tedious to keep track of all the connections. Prototype tokens keep all the logic in one place. This app lets zookeepers order food for their animals. They can review their cart and fill in shipping information. They can also go back and forth between steps by using the buttons at the bottom or the breadcrumbs at the top. Last, they can check out and pay. This seems like a fairly simple prototype, but let's take a look at how it was created. Let's take a look at the 30,000 foot view within the prototype tab of the right panel. This entire thing is made of one large variant full of interactive components. An advantage of building it like this is that all the connections are held within one parent frame, keeping any changes we need to make fairly close together. We end up with a lot of spaghetti that points back and forth between a lot of the same pieces. We even missed a connection, let's fix that. We need to click down into the element we want, drag it to the right variant, and then adjust all the animation settings. This all works fairly well, but there are also a few downsides. The first one, what if we wanted to update our animation timing across all these connections? We'd have to select each one and update the value. And second, all of our connections are bound to this component, so any changes we make can get us into a place where our prototype is broken. This is where the idea for prototype tokens came from. We wanted to be able to separate the logic of our prototype from the structure and design of our pages. Before we start cooking, let's look at some differences in how we've set up our file. Instead of making our prototype connections within one variant, we're going to use different frames. We've also separated our breadcrumbs, header, footer, and steps into their own components to help us redo as little work as possible. In our breadcrumbs component, we've created variants to account for whether or not each step is valid. These correspond to the steps below. It's time to create our prototype token component that will account for each step. Press the shortcut F to activate the frame tool and draw a frame. Double click on the layer name and rename it to prototype token. Next, we're going to open the design tab and add a pink fill color, reducing the opacity to 45%. Now let's create a style out of this. Open the style menu by clicking these four dots, then click the plus icon to define a new style. Let's name this prototype forward slash filled. Now we'll disconnect this style and set the opacity to 0%. Go through the same process to create another new style and name it prototype forward slash empty. This will help us select our tokens when we want to change their display. Let's change this back to our filled style. Let's turn this into a component by pressing the shortcut option command K. Now we're going to create tokens to match the steps and arrange them the same visually so we can keep track. Click the plus icon in the properties panel and select variant. We'll name this first one step and then click the settings icon to change the default to step one. Let's account for our other states. Add another variant and name it step two with a check mark emoji and set the value to false. Let's add one more variant and call it step three with a check mark emoji and set the value to false. Now we have what we need to set up our steps. Let's make our variant frame a little bigger to give us some room. Create two duplicates of our first variant by using the shortcut option, click and drag. These are our step one states. Select all of those and drag a duplicate down using the same shortcut. Last, we need two more for step three. This accounts for each of our steps. Now select the second column and change their step two property to true. And our third column is when step two and three are both true. Zooming out, we can see again that the arrangement of our tokens matches the arrangement of our frames to the right. Let's connect each of our tokens to its corresponding frame. Back in our prototype tab, select the top left token and drag a new connection to the top left frame. Now our bottom left token to the bottom left frame. We'll do this across the second column and the third column as well. This is why we set our prototype tokens up in the same visual arrangement as our screens. Okay, that's it for fussing around with connections. No noodles back and forth between screens, and we have one easy to manage area for manipulating connection details. Compare this to our first prototype that had spaghetti all over the place. It's time to hook these tokens up to our components so things start to get interactive. Because we broke all of our UI into small reusable components, we're going to save a bit of time in this step. Let's copy a token, select our step marker component, and paste it inside. This will be forced to our auto layout, so go over to the frame section of the design panel and turn on absolute positioning. Now we can align our token to the top left and change its width to match the frame of the step. Next, change the constraints to left and right and top and bottom, so that it resizes across our different elements. For our other two markers, we'll copy our token by selecting it and pressing Command C. Then we'll select both of the other markers and we'll use Figma's multi-paste feature to paste it in both places at once with command V. Because these components were used to build up all of our other components, each instance already has our marker applied. We can clean up a few of the markers. 
If step two isn't complete, we'll never go to step three, so we can delete those. If we're on step one, we don't need to link to it, so delete those. If we're on step two, we don't need to link to step two, and if we're on step three, we don't need to link to step three. Now we want to make sure all our properties are applied. Select all of our shipping links in our step one row. Over in our properties panel, change the step property to step two. Let's double check all of our cart links. Those should already be on step one since that was the default. And anytime we're linking to billing, we want to make sure step is set to step three. For validation, select all the markers in our last column and change step two and three validation to true. Select all of our second column markers and change their validation to true for step two and false for step three. Finally, let's double check that step one is all set to false. Whew. Take a breath. We just did a lot. Let's see what happens when we zoom out and take a look at all of our prototype connections. Each of our token instances inherited the connection from the main token components. And we can still manage all of this from our one control frame. How else can we take advantage of this setup? We can reuse this logic across all our other clickable components. Let's take a copy of our token and paste it over the top of our next and back button components. Now that all of our buttons have a token, we can come into our steps and change properties to apply the correct prototype links. First, select all of our disabled states and delete the tokens. Now, anytime we are on step one, the next button will link to step two. Update that property to match. When we're going back from step two, we want to go to step one. Anytime we go back from step three, we go to step two. And anytime we are on step two, the next button links to step three. Now for our step validation, let's select all the tokens in our last column and make sure step two and three are set to true. All of our tokens in the second column should be set to true for step two and false for three, and our first column should be set to false for both. I know this is a lot to take in and we might be getting full, but we're almost finished. We can see that all of our steps are now pointing to their screen. This might look more intimidating than the first prototype now, but remember, all of our connections are managed from one simple component set. Our prototype also includes a couple steps where we want the user to mock fill in our forms before moving to the next step. We can reuse our prototype token to quickly make those connections. Copy our token and paste it above our empty checkout form, resize it to match the size of the form, and update the properties to link to step two with step two valid. In step three, we can do the same thing and update properties to link to step three with both steps valid. Every connection in this prototype is now managed in one area. Let's preview our prototype and make sure all of our connections are actually acting like we expect them to. We can go back and forth, mock fill in our form and so on, but we have all those ugly pink boxes all over our prototype. Remember those styles we created in the beginning of the video? Move back over to the design panel and we can use those to select all elements using that style and swap them to the empty version. Back in our prototype, nobody will be able to tell that the clicks are separated from the UI elements. Things work just as expected. There's even more we can do with this technique. Let's say we decide to change the speed of the animation for all the connections. If we select the parent frame and press enter, we will select all the children. Now we can adjust the animation for all of them at the same time. In one fell swoop, we've updated every single connection in our prototype. Or what if we want to create some variations on this prototype so we could swap between them to compare? Let's rename our token frame to prototype tokens forward slash slow and make a duplicate of it. Name the new one prototype tokens forward slash fast. Now we can change the timing back to our initial 150 millisecond value. To quickly swap this out, select our step marker component and use selection colors to select all the tokens. Use the instant swap menu to change that to the fast variant. We can now compare speeds without recreating every single piece of our prototype. Okay, now what if we wanted to update the visual style of our components? We can simply adjust our styles and know that our connections will remain untouched. Or maybe we want to add a fourth step. We could easily copy a new set of variants and screens to quickly do that. As your prototypes keep evolving and getting more complex, you're managing it all from one place. Prototype tokens might not be perfect for every situation, and they definitely take a little bit of getting used to, but they set us up to duplicate as little work as possible. We'd love to hear about it if you end up trying them out. I hope this Figma Byte helps you take the tedious tentacles out of your prototypes. Thanks for watching.